So if it's okay with you, Lady C, we're going to do a quick fire round where I'm going to ask you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 12 questions. But if you could answer in 15 seconds or less oh. to get, it's just a bit of fun. Normally is we, we enjoy it. Okay. So, quick fire question number one, Lady C. What do you think is your greatest strength? Perseverance. What do you think is your greatest weakness? Well, I'm not going to say that. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose it used to be gullibility. What is your greatest fear? I don't have a greatest fear. I think in life you learn that if you're afraid of something, just conquer your fears. It's as easy to be courageous as it is to be cowardly because ultimately you have foreseen and unforeseen consequences, whether you are brave or cowardly. So you may as well be courageous. Sorry to, uh, sorry to take longer than 15 seconds. I actually think that was a brilliant answer. So my pleasure. Um, no worries about that. It's, this is your round. If you want to take 17 seconds, then you're allowed. <laughs> um, <laughs> What was the best career decision you've ever made? Writing my Diana book was the best career decision I ever made. The next best career decision I ever made was going into the jungle, ironically enough. What's the worst career de decision you've ever made? Entrusting a vast sum of money to somebody who presented himself as my greatest male friend and ripped me off royally what's the best advice you ever remember receiving i'm not sure i can think of something so quickly <laughs> what's the worst advice you ever remember receiving again i can't think sorry <laughs> it's i'm not very right. good on snap things now, this is great. Maybe we'll come back to those. It's all good. This one doesn't have to take 15 seconds. What one thing do you think is wrong with the world that you'd love to see changed? I would like to see people have more respect for each other's opinions. And that means that I have the right to offend you with my opinion and you have the right to offend me with yours. If there was one person on the planet alive today, you'd love to see interviewed on a show like this, who would it be and why? Thomas Sowell. Thomas Sowell, who is, he is America's greatest living philosopher. And he is a fascinating thinker. Uh, he is brilliant and he's sound and solid and he is grounded in true philosophy. He's very against a lot of what is happening nowadays because he is a true libertarian. He understands liberty is very important, but it also comes with responsibility and that one should always be a measure. And prejudice can be a very destructive thing. And it doesn't matter whether you're prejudiced against what is fashionable or unfashionable. Prejudice is usually the sign of an uninformed mind and a really niggardly heart. This show has the word disruptive in it. Disruptive entrepreneur, disruptive insert, whatever word you want. What does the word disruptive mean to you? Oh, it usually means badly behaved house guests <laughs> who don't come to dinner on time or who are, you know, take cheese boards into the bedroom and then when you're looking for them, you can't find them. That to me is <laughs> what disruptive means. <laughs> and it, it agitates me greatly. <laughs> <laughs> I like things to run smoothly and I like people to do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. Oh, that's to me 
disruptive. What you're doing is not disruptive. What you are doing is thinking creatively and resourcefully. And that's to me not disruptive. That is life enhancing. You know, a friend of mine died a few days ago. Uh, I hadn't seen him for years, but he and his wife, ex-wife now, uh, she was a, a she's a, still a lovely, lovely person. And I only spoke to her the other day. Edward de Bono. Have you heard of Edward de Bono? Yeah, Who, read up on him. Yeah, read his books, creative. Yeah. Natural thinking, etc. Yeah. Brilliant man. And I mean, you know, you had some people like uh, there's a journalist called Craig Brown who proved food him. I mean, you're just pathetic, you know. I mean, and saying, oh, well, he didn't say anything that wasn't that he, you know, what he said didn't discover anything new. Actually, he did. He did. He, he, it's it, the fact is that. Lateral thinking has always existed and didn't have a name, doesn't mean that he didn't discover it in much the same way that atoms have always existed. But the ancient Greeks discovered atoms. And then rather more recently, we discovered atoms uh, 2000 years later. And of course, so to say, well, you know, to discount it, because he gave a label to something that nobody else had ever given a name. And he's absolutely right. I mean, okay, he did come up with examples occasionally that were a stretch, but that happens with everybody because you're trying to convey the thought and not all your examples are supreme or superb, but he, I think, was one of the great thinkers of the age. And his ex-wife, by the way, is divine. She's absolutely lovely. <laughs> and he was okay, too. I, I found him, you know, just okay. But she was fabulous. <laughs>